I'm just testing the performance in this freaking machine, and uh, this is running full playback smooth at full resolution. That's nuts. This is the new M1 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro. And I have to say, it's been a very long time since I've been this excited about a computer, and I've had a lot over the years. So when I'm not out shooting vintage lens videos for my YouTube channel, I am running my own production company. Not because I'm entrepreneurial, but more out of necessity. Specializing primarily on the post-production side of things. Computers have always been a tool I've had to rely quite heavily on, especially ones where speed is the name of the game. Now with these new M series MacBook Pros, it's been the first time I've ever considered purchasing a laptop as my main editing system for two reasons. The first, growing the business has been a huge priority for me since my introduction to vintage lenses. I'm doing a lot more production projects now. Upgrading to the Red Komodo and the need for raw video, plus the ability to quickly turn these projects around are now a top priority for me. Now, not just the Red Komodo footage, my S18 shoots high resolution H265, which brings my current system to a halt. Now, I don't mind making proxies, but even still, the entire system gets bogged down quite heavily when you throw on color grading or layers. Now being able to edit these high resolution files seamlessly is a massive advantage to the workflow. Now I do need to dig a little deeper into this with testing, but all signs point to this thing rips. Now the second major factor when considering this purchase is portability. And because I'm doing a lot more production gigs, it's much easier to bring a capable laptop and external hard drive to set versus carrying around my iMac so that we can media dump and screen footage on site. For me, this is my first laptop that should be able to crush these two scenarios like a paper cup. And I'll crush you like a paper cup. <laughs> now granted, I just got this thing in the last eight hours and haven't really had a chance to do too many deep dive tests yet but those are coming. I've got a lot of questions about the performance of this thing that I want answered, so I'm going to try to do my best to answer those. So stick around if you want to hear some real world performance scenarios, you can cross reference to other videos out there. Now the small amount of testing I have done at this point are proving to be quite promising. Real time playback at full resolution. My iMac choked hard on these shots without proxies. While I do have you here, leave me any questions on scenarios you'd like me to test down below and I'll see what I can do. Oh, I also should say that I, it's pretty obvious, that I did purchase this machine at full retail price. Apple is not giving me a review unit. And like my 2013 MacBook Pro before it, I do plan on keeping this thing around for a while. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time with BenchMe's. I'll put some of the latest results at the end of this video. I'm going to run them while I edit this. I just don't know what they are yet. Stick around for that. Ooh. So I've had a little time to play with the footage and I have to say that I've never seen a performance increase like this ever before, especially in something in such a small form factor. The high resolution output of this car sequence between the M1 and the iMac is just night and day. Roughly four minutes versus 17 minutes, that's crazy. Usually when I render stuff, I just go for a walk. So while this performance rules, it's not really a top priority for me. The playback is, especially when you throw effects, color at high resolution video images. Being able to edit relatively complicated timelines in full resolution, I, I don't even have words. Now I'm not even using ProRes or ProRes raw footage, which this thing is optimized for. Now for me, the biggest challenge when deciding to purchase this laptop was really switching from a desktop experience to a laptop one. It's something a little time will help sort out, but the performance gains on this machine are absolutely worth it for me. Now, I really never thought I'd see this much power outside of a desktop machine this soon, but here we are. Ah, yum.